Hi, Rosie here from Labyrinth of Nurture. Um, my, all my classes are all about um, getting more movement into your daily life as well as um, exercising. And so I thought it would be appropriate as one of my courses is all about getting more movement while you're stationary at a desk working, that it would be great to give you a free um, mini class on getting more movement while you're queuing to get into the shops. Um, I know a lot of people are queuing for a long time so why not make the most of this time and um, work on mobilising your joints, creating more strength, creating some balance um, and helping that time to move along a little bit more. So um, just let's start off with some head circles. So you're just going to, first of all, think about bringing your head back. So imagine that you've got a, um, a collar, um, a nice tall collar. You're going to think about bringing your neck back so that your um, neck fits right against that collar. So this brings you nicely into alignment here um, and stops that kind of head jutting that we all do when we're reading a book or on the phone. So bringing your... Uh, neck back and you're just going to drop your chin in this position to your chest and you can even um, do a little marker see how many fingers away from your chest your chin is and as the um, weeks go by that you can do these exercises maybe they will get um, better so then you're going to drop your chin over drop your ear over to your shoulder and all these exercises are about taking time to allow your body to stretch and release so these are why these are so great while you're in the queue because you're stretching and releasing you're also giving your mind time to um, relax as well so then you're going to slowly take your head at uh, your neck back so you're looking up into the sky you can even take a couple of breaths here And then drop your uh, ear over to your other ear, over to your other shoulder again. We're just taking some time. A couple of breaths. It's all about slowing down and being present. Chin to chest again. Come up to, position, up to your starting position. Just make sure that your neck is ramped back into that collar back to chin to chest let's go around the other way this time so make sure that you're not bringing your shoulder up to your ear but you're dropping your ear uh, your shoulder down and giving your ear space to move down towards your shoulder try to keep your body upright don't lean your body over you don't need to lean your body over to allow your ear to drop down And then other ear to the other shoulder, drop to that shoulder. Make sure that your body is upright. And then roll back to the chest again. And that's quite a nice one for clearing your mind and getting um, rid of all the aches and pains that you're, you're getting in your neck. Then we're going to start with some arm circles. So um, I wanted to make sure that you don't bring your chest up. That puts compression on your back. So drop your, your chest. Um, have your thumb pointing forwards. And you're slowly going to circle your arm up. Turn your hand when you're at the top. So palm out. And your little fingers leading as you come back. So really nice arm stretch. We don't often allow our arms to stretch. And it's a good warm up for um, getting these off those top shelves. So let's do that one more time. And on the other arm. So thumb pointing forwards. As you get to the top, rotate your hand. So palms away from you. And little finger comes down behind you. Really thinking about keeping your chest 
pointing forward so you're not rotating your um, upper body as you're uh, rotating your arm and thinking about allowing your chest to stay down so that you're really getting that movement in the shoulder. Okay, brilliant. So now I want you to imagine with your palm facing up to the sky, I want you to imagine that you've got a cross drawn on um, your upper arm here and you are going to rotate your arm so the cross is pointing down. And then turn so that it's pointing up towards the sky again. So what this is doing is just getting some mobility in the shoulder joint. So often we're really stiff here in the shoulder joint um, and we don't actually use this. Um, we tend to use a scapula to move our arms. So this is fantastic for just getting a little bit of movement just in the shoulder joint. And let's try the other arm. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting my hand on my scapula joint to make sure that that's not moving as I rotate my arm outwards and inwards and you might find that it's easier to rotate inwards because this is where we step, tend to be so much is an inwardly rotating arm so outwards and inwards. Cool so the next one we're actually going to use the scapulas so the big bones there, we need to bring them up to, so your shoulders up near your ears, have your arms out in front of you, and then drop your, bring your shoulders so that your scapulas are moving apart from each other, then drop them down, try to drop them right down low, and then bring them together again. So you're drawing a kind of circle and just getting your scapulas to move in a different way to what they um, usually are. Quite often we're like this. So we want to start up when the, and the scapulas are creating like wings on our backs because they're in, in together and, and up. So we're just stretching them apart and just really getting uh, some movement in this upper back, which can be quite hard to do. Excellent. So if by this time it's time for you to move, we're not just going to walk forwards, we're going to do um, a side step, what we call um, a monster walk, which helps to build up strength around the hips, which is perfect for all of us who tend to have um, hip weakness. So you're going to take a step to, we're going to lead with the left leg. So take a step out to the left then you're not going to bring your right leg right close to your left leg. You're just going to bring it um, a couple of, move it a couple of inches. And you can feel that this hip is really working as you're moving along. Okay, so we've got, we've moved up the queue. If you haven't moved up the queue, you can go back through those first four. Um, or you can just want to walk sideways and back again where you are in your line. So the next one we're going to do is a side bend. Stretch these muscles that get so tight. So bring your arm up over your head and then I want you to lean to the side but as though you're moving through toffee. So make it a really slow, slow move. As you move slowly and you're resisting that move, you can feel the stretch here. And you can take a little bit of time to hang out here, take a couple of breaths. And then as when you're coming back up, I want you to think about um, squeezing these muscles to bring you back up. So you're making them work rather than bringing yourself up by using your hand to um, kind of shoot you across. And then we're going to do the same the other way. So arm up. And slowly, slowly, slowly move through that. Did I say toffee before? I meant treacle. Hold it. Take a couple of breaths. If you're tense here, you can take a couple of breaths, breathing into that area. Just get some internal movement. And then come back up. 
The next thing we're going to do is some hip circles. So if you've got a trolley, you can use this to balance. Make sure you put the brake on. And you're just going to circle. So it looks like you're drawing a big kind of circle with your knee. So you're really getting your hip joint moving. Then we'll go with the other hip joint. This is really good because quite often we don't get our, our hips moving in the full range of movement of movement that they can do. Then we're going to um, think about the pelvis, the pelvis circles. So legs apart a little bit, bend your knees slightly, and you're just going to think about being a belly dancer and just circling your hips. So you're just getting this whole pelvis moving. Try and move it independently of your back, so it's not your back moving and your torso isn't moving. Imagine you've got two drinks on your shoulders that you want to keep um, safe. So, um, yeah, don't move your shoulders. And you can go back the other way. And this is great if you get a lot of um, lower back pain. Just starting to mobilise your pelvis will just help release and relieve some of that pain. Okay, so now we're going to do a lunge. So I'll do it sideways. You can do it whichever direction you want if you don't want to invade into the six foot either side of you. Take your right leg forward and bend that leg. Make sure that your knee doesn't go over your ankle. So if you need a bit more of a stretch, just inch that leg further forward. And then you're just going to allow a little bit of bend in this leg. And think about tucking your bum under. As soon as you've tucked under, you should feel that stretch down the front of your um, thigh, uh, hip here. Now, you can either just hold this or you can just bend this leg up and down slightly to get a little bit of a, a pulse in there. It's up to you. When you've done about four of those, We'll just move on to the other leg. Again, make sure that you are not letting your knee come over your ankle. Um, in the classes, it's we always look at it's really interesting to see what happens on each leg doing uh, on each side as you do different exercises. You know, so does your is it easier to get into this movement? Does your knee swing in? Does your um, foot move? All kinds of interesting things. They're tucking the bum under. So often I see people do this, but that's putting pressure on your knee, your lower back and your pelvic floor. So I don't recommend that. I recommend tucking your bum under and you'll feel that stretch down the inside, down the front of the hip, uh, uh, th um, hip here, the hip flexor. Okay, so monster walk time. We started with the left leg last time. So we'll go on the right leg. And if the cue's moving, whenever the cue moves, don't just work, walk forwards. Always do a monster walk and it will really start to build up your hips. Be brilliant for you. So again, you're taking a step out to the right and you're moving your left leg just a couple of inches towards. Uh, so a couple of inches that way, a couple of inches closer. So you're always um, just using this hip to actually move you across and you should start to feel it if you walk a long way um, and you're monster walking you'll really feel that stretch okay so now the fun one and this one you might, might want to turn sideways from the other people because we're going to do some squats so make sure your feet are pointing straight ahead and you're going to think about the squat you're going to think about taking your bum out for, behind you so that your knees stay over your ankles. And you might find you only get a little way. That's fine. We only work on baby squats. We always work where our body is. Um, we work on shallow squats rather than deep squats. Um, because quite often our bodies aren't balanced and strong enough to be able to do a, a, a deep squat without hurting knees and pelvic floor and back. So just a little way. And then to come up. Or you to push your feet into the ground so you actually can feel that you're um, using your glutes to bring you up if you push your feet into the ground 
it will strengthen that area as you're coming up rather than just kind of listlessly coming up and down you really want to power coming up and if that's quite if you're finding that quite easy then hang down here making sure that those knees don't creep over your ankles and maybe do a few pulses excellent next one is a single leg balance so let's work on some balance and again if you do have a trolley with you you can use this to help you um put put the brake on okay so you're just simply just going to lift up one leg just practice balancing just see what happens when you balance on one leg you're using your arms a lot um, is your ankle um, struggling does your knee hurt your hip hurt so just do it for a couple of seconds and then come on to the other one and what we want to work on is that you keep your upper body straight and your arms aren't, don't get involved and that you're just working on allowing your ankle to get stronger to be able to help you with the balancing and you can do a couple of those and they're quite subtle cool so as you can see we've worked all the way down we started our head we're working all the way down to our feet and the next one is heel raises and it's simply coming up to stand on your toes but what i want you to do is really really slowly really slowly so you're really developing the strength and the balance and i want you to make sure that your heels don't wing out to the side so you keep your heels in line with the rest of your body and the slower and more controlled you do this with your heels together the more strength you're going to create in um, your lower legs and your ankles so done a couple of those and then the last thing I really want you to do is think about moving your toes. It's lovely weather out, out at the moment. So I bet you've all got sandals or um, shoes where you can see your toes. So um, it's time to get them moving. Your feet should be as mobile as your hands, really. They've got the same amount of joints and, and muscles, more or less. So let's just see if you can pick up your big toes. So just lifting your big toes without moving the rest of your toes something for you to work on if you're finding you can lift up your big toe really easily can you lift up the toe next to it if you're finding none of that easy can you um, lift up all of your toes you might need to bring your weight back in your heels you might find you're, you're in this position you want to bring your weight back so that it frees up your toes to move um, something that's really important I work a lot on in all my classes is um, foot mobility um, having stiff feet can impact so much of your body your um, your ankle you know not just causing foot problems but ankles knees hips back shoulders neck so this is just the start of getting your um, feet flexible and as you've got all this time while you're in the queue you might as well start really nurturing your feet and the rest of your body so that takes us through the whole exercise so i hope that's not too many things to think about um but i also hope that that helps you to um get through the queuing and don't think of the queuing as something um bad and you don't have to be queuing going doing this out shopping you know you could do this routine at home as part of your daily routine and you'll see some really um, amazing benefits from doing small movements regularly all right take care of yourself stay well i'll speak to you soon Bye bye